Back in 2020, my guest today was catapulted to the national spotlight where the woke mob labeled her as the Patriot Barbie. Why? Because she chose to stand up for what is right and refused to comply with Oregon's COVID-19 lockdowns by keeping her salon opened. Now she has dedicated her life to activism and freedom fighting. Get your questions ready because the show starts now. This is the Nico Lagan Show. Warning. Warning. This show contains explicit content. Listener discretion is advised. Real. Real. Raw. Raw. And shooting you straight. This is the Nico Lagan Show. And now your host, Nico. My name is Nico Lagan and I am a voice for common sense. I believe in accountability, manly men, feminine women, small governments, free speech, the second amendment, and God. This episode of the Nico Lagan Show is brought to you by the Alpha Creator Blueprint. If you are a male content creator trying to take your social media to the next level, visit tacblueprint.com and let me show you how I get millions of views on my content every single month. Like always, for anybody that's live, we want to hear from you. We want to get your questions. So don't be shy. That's why we're doing it live. So it doesn't matter that you agree or you disagree. Have the balls to ask questions. <laughs> Lindsey Graham, the Patriot Barbie. What's going on? What's going on? I love your accent. <laughs> That's the French accent for you. I know. It's so cool. And I, it was, yeah, it's awesome. No wonder people, millions of people listen to your show. They just want to hear your accent. <laughs> you know, I got to say that the French accent works better with women than it does for guys. Guys tend to make fun of me. Women tend to say, oh, well, we like your accent. So whatever. I can it totally works for me. see that. I can see yep. that. Yep. Yep. Now, for the people that don't know you, I found a two-liner about you that I absolutely love. So Ooh, okay. you are a loud, proud, pro-gun, pro-life, Jesus-loving, red-blooded, conservative Republican women, and the author of Targeted, One Mom's Fight for Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Happiness. That's right. That is a good one-liner. You're right. Good. It sums it all up. And... You know, I was I was checking your stuff and you've been on Fox News, you've been on the Lars Larson show, you've mm -hmm. been on the whatever podcast, which that part is fucking hilarious, by mm. the way. Did you ever imagine for a second in 2020 when you did something as simple as keeping your salon open during the COVID-19 lockdown that you would be where you are today? Oh, Lord, no. In fact, <laughs> I tell people, if I knew what was going to happen, I probably wouldn't have done it. The, the biggest blessing in my life is that I was completely politically ignorant. I am mm. talking like piss you off. Don't care about politics. Don't vote for my local laws. Barely knew who was president and who was vice president. Like politically, willfully ignorant. And if I knew that there was such a a radical division between the left and the right about stupid things like if I can pay my bills, I might not have done what I did. And so it was a gift that I did not know what I was throwing myself into. And I'm really glad actually that I had that gift because where I'm at now is such an incredible blessing. I would never want to go back to prior to 2020. And it sounds so weird to say, but I wouldn't want my salon back. I wouldn't want all that money back, all that financial security. I wouldn't want it because what I'm doing now has so much more purpose. I think that's a magic word right there, right? Purpose. Mm -hmm. Yep. I was um, I was rescued by God out of many, many things in my twenties. I wouldn't even be able to count how many times He probably saved my life, and I don't, I don't even know it. And I went on to do hair and have women in my chair, you know, five days a week for ten hours, twelve hours straight. And I was not ministering to those women. I wasn't telling them all of the things that I had done that God had saved me from. So I feel like the Lord chose me, um, what a blessing, to, to take this stand and to cast me into a purpose where now I use my platform a um, second time. You know, no, I'm not going to make the same mistake again. I'm going to use my platform to glorify him and talk about all the things that I should have been talking about for years in my salon. You know, I... Uh if my socials are any indication of the hate 
that you must get <laughs> which one's worse which one hates on you more women or men Mm, I'm gonna say men, actually, which I think is really? super. It's such a beta move, right? Like, what kind of man does it take to attack a, a mom, Christian mom of three? Like, no, uh, you know, a lot of my movement has turned into a, more like women empowerment, which is kind of a, really? a surprising turn. Yeah, um, and we can get into that. Why it's, it has to do with the stuff in the 20s, but it's it's men making fun of my looks and making fun of like Botox and like my tattoos. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and consider it a compliment that you are not even able to attack my character, my vocabulary, mm -hmm. my intelligence, my sense of humor, my personality. You have to attack something that I actually have control over that I willingly choose. Right. It'd be like, Oh, your air is such an ugly Brown. I'm like, I dye it this color Brown. You know, I don't, but why would you make fun of something I chose to do? I chose to get these tattoos. I'm clearly, I'm proud of them. Why would you attack something that I'm clearly proud of instead of go for something that might actually hurt my feelings and they can't, they can't do it. Cause they're like, well, can't call her stupid because she is smart. Right. I'm, I dig into the insults and I, um, I dissect them and understand you literally don't have anything with, with warrant to, to be mean to me about. So I'm going to go ahead and take this as a compliment. If you can't debate insult, Yes. This is, is what, what I, do. yep. This is yep. what I've noticed. I get hundreds, if not thousands of hate messages every day. So I get it. But I would have thought that men would be nicer to a woman. Well, remember, we're talking about leftist men. So they actually might be women. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's actually good. That, that you I know what? Point taken. That. No oh point taken. You, you um, do have, you do have a good point. That's yeah, true. I do. And, so, and I don't even know if I mean that they're women posing as men or if they're men, but they're really posing as women. I, I you know, I'm it, the whole thing is confusing, but they're leftist men. So, A, they don't really have morals or character. Mm. Um, B, they are the values and morals that they think that they stand on are so corrupted that they don't even know right from wrong. They don't even know they don't even have confidence in what they believe because they can't really in their own mind justify what they believe in because it's wrong. And so the only solution that they have is to attack people like me, like you who speak up boldly because we're not afraid of what we believe in. We know we can stand on it. Um, the only way to shut us up really would be to attempt to humiliate us or talk down to us enough that we would cower in, you know, in our own um, self-esteem, which I got plenty of self-esteem. Like, you're not going to get me on anything, so. You know who gets the most irritated about the comments? My girlfriend. Oh, yeah. About a Protective. year and a half ago, I yeah. told her, stop reading my social, don't, don't go on my social <laughs> media anymore. Don't deal with it. Because yeah. she's like, what the fuck's wrong with people? They yeah. don't know you. Why do they talk to you this way? Yeah. And and the worst part is, you're like, I wish I could make you understand that, A, it doesn't hurt me. Like, these people are nobodies, right? Anybody that mm -hmm. has enough time in their day to to go on my Instagram, and this is how they do it with I don't know if they do the, this with you, but this is what they do to me. It'll be like one person, and they'll go to every reel and comment something yep. nasty and vile. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you're literally sitting on social media, stalking my page, and taking the time. It takes 30 seconds to write a whole, like, vile post. That's what you're doing all day long. I got better things to do than argue with you. Like the fact that you have time to do that means your your life is so in shambles yep. and boring that this is all you want to do. But they're so protective and you're like, you know that it doesn't hurt my feelings, right? So don't let it hurt your feelings. You don't need to protect me. Uh, you know, I've, I, I've learned a long time ago, I simply respond to them by saying, thank you very much. I always love hearing from a fan. <laughs> and plus... <laughs> You're helping me with the algorithm. Algorithms yes. don't care that it's good or bad comments. That's so right. thank you. Thank Always you. love to hear from a fan. Yep. Peace. Okay, you know what my favorite comeback is? I I don't often read the comments anymore, A, because I don't have time. Yeah. Some of my posts will get like a thousand comments now. But if I manage to find a hater, and, and usually I know because in my Instagram um, like notifications, I'll see one person making continuous vile comments because yeah, yeah. I'm like, my whole notification is full of them because they're <laughs> obsessed. So I'll specifically go to that one comment and I'll go and respond totally because it's like they're trying to yeah. get me riled up. They're trying to start a fight with me, but I don't want them to think I didn't see it. I want yep. them to know I saw your comment. It doesn't affect me. 
Totally. And they're like, ah, like, that's not, you're supposed to argue with me. And I'm like, no, I got three kids. I got a husband. I got a home. I got a movement. It, I'm sure it pisses them off. You know, it's funny because I wanted to get into this. So I think, thank you for mentioning your family and your husband. Because one of the things that I hear, like I quit, I, I'm a sales engineer by trade. I, I left a very high paying job because they were threatening to fire me if I didn't get vaccinated. Like mm. this is, you know, in Canada, it's 85% of Canadians are vaccinated. And I just refuse. I basically told them they, they could go fuck themselves. And then I, I started working on my so online social presence. And 18 mm -hmm. months ago, I dedicated myself to it, quit my job. Oh, so good. But I'm lucky in a way that my my girlfriend, my my partner is was for it. She understood mm -hmm. why I did it because mm -hmm. we really went from me making hundreds of thousands of dollars every year with a secure job to, you know what, let's refinance the house and see what the fuck happens. Yeah, that and is a huge leap of faith. I did it because God told me to. I yep. put 100% my faith in God and I just said, yep. let's go, bro. Let's fucking do this shit. Let's see where this goes. Oh my gosh. We ended up traveling the US for 18 months uh, in an RV. We did uh, coast to coast to coast. We were in Mexico. We came back in Canada to figure out what's the next step a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And the question I have for you, because this is an excuse I hear from people all the time, is I have too much to lose in order to start to start talking because we are in the situation that we are right now mm -hmm. because people don't don't grow a pair of balls and say you know what this is what i stand for and i'm gonna live what i stand for in, instead of just speaking about it right is that something you thought you, you talked about with your husband when all this crap started happening did he say something did he stand by you and just say you know what do what you got to do is that something you had in your mind your husband you know and your family you know, what's crazy is we did not anticipate that by the end of all of it, we would lose all six businesses. We did not anticipate that. But the, the truth is, and I can look back and say this in, in full authority, full confidence, okay? If I had not stood up to the government and everything did not happen exactly as it happened, I believe that we would have lost a lot more. And it's hard to say that, right? So we lost a, a gym, like a 30,000 square foot gym, like a full gym. We lost my salon. I had 25 stylists. I was making 200,000 a year. We lost four tanning salons. So all six businesses we lost because of cancel culture, not because of the government. Okay. Yep. But if I had not stood up to the government, we would have continued to have all of those rents, all of those um, mm. overheads, all of those business loans come due, including our own house, right? We weren't able to pay our mortgage on our house because we had businesses that weren't open. We would have owed, I, I would say somewhere in the couple hundred to $300,000 in debt, mm. all of a sudden come due at the end of the whatever lockdown, whenever the governor decided to let us reopen, we would have probably had to file for bankruptcy and lose everything anyway, okay? Now we lost it, but in the process of losing it, was God's way of showing me, you know, I have something else for you. I didn't allow this to happen to hurt you. And that's what faith is knowing, not just saying God is real. He does care about me. He does have a plan to prosper me. And his plan is always greater. That is what the Bible says. Do I believe that? Yes. Because in that moment where I lost all of my businesses and we had to sell our home and move to Arizona, I was faced with the the reality that I had to say, God's punishing me or no, God is allowing this. And if he's allowing it, he has something so much greater. And I can be excited about that. Not, not just like this is happening. I can be joyful and excited that the Lord has chosen to make me Job, to take everything from me so that he could call me into his purpose. And so if I not, if I had not stood up, we would have lost everything, but that would have been bad. We lost everything, but because I stood up, I was pushed into my calling. And that is something I will never, ever regret. And so let, let's, I kind of went, kind of went rogue here. My husband did, I, didn't, I always, I always ended up not answering the question. I'm like, I'm just writing a book. Can you write this down? Oh, good. My husband didn't realize either, like what this would cost us. Um, mm. 
And again, I think if we had known, it might have been scary, which is where people are now. They have what they have and they're scared to lose it. Mm -hmm. I was blessed that God like shielded my eyes from the consequences of what would happen. And I lost everything, but I'm able to live in the splendor and glory of what he had for me. So anyone, you know, so my husband has fully supported me this entire time, even when it was getting rough. By the time it was too late, by the time we had lost everything, we realized our life as we knew it was over. Then we had the choice really to not have regret because it's like, well, what can you do? We, we can't help this. We can't take this back. We wouldn't. Now let's just give God our lives and, and go with what, whatever he's leading us to do. Exactly what I'm being like. I'm going through that exactly right now. Mm. So I feel you. I know exactly, but I, you know, in order to, it took me to, to lose everything to find God. Isn't that a blessing? <laughs> Best blessing ever because, you know, I grew up without a father. And you know mm-hmm. what I came up to to realize over time? It, I always had a father. I just mm-hmm. didn't know he was there. Yep. Yep. They they say that he finds you at your lowest, right? At your rock bottom. And that's mm-hmm. not always true. But that's often what you pray. What we you pray for people is when life is good, you don't have to praise the Lord. Because you got mm-hmm. everything and you think you got mm-hmm. it all yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's another situation is when I was in Oregon, I was living my life and we had a plenty of money and we were financially secure. I didn't need to praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. I was, life was good. I didn't need to find him. But when you lose everything is when you realize you need something to, you need something to comfort and console you. And you, you need something to believe in. And he is it. Amen to that. A, can, amen. Capital letters. Couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> You know, here's a funny question for you. I was looking at your Instagram and there's a picture that you have that you seem starstruck and that's when you're standing in front of Donald Trump. Did you feel like a little girl? Oh like, were God. you like, yeah, were I you? Because your face does not lie. Your I feel face. like a little girl just talking about it right now. <laughs> I love you, Trump. I have never been speechless, probably mm. in my life. And... Yeah. Let's let's clarify now for all the crazies. I do not worship Trump. He is not my God, but he is celebrity status. Oh, yeah. He is a president of the United States. You tell me when you're going to get a chance to meet a president of the United States ever. And he is he is somebody that I am proud of. He did amazing things for this country. So, yes, meeting him was like goals, hashtag goals. And when it wasn't even just like it, it wasn't even a, a pose like you won a picture with trump you walk up in front of the billboard you shake his hand you go away he called me out of the crowd based on this red bow that i was wearing and to have him recognize something about you and bring you up to the front of a small crowd out of the crowd and and have a conversation with you is like mind-blowing and you know what's crazy is uh, this is one of the moments that God fulfilled his promises because I have had multiple opportunities to meet Trump. I've shake, I've shaken his hand once and that was cause he was just walking past the red rope and I stuck my hand out and shook it. And I've passed up opportunities to meet him where I walk up, shake his hand, take a picture, walk away. Right. I just said, Lord, when, when I meet Trump, it's going to be special. He's going to know who I am and it's not going to be a posed picture where I could say, I met Trump. It's going to be better. And listen, I was there at um, Florida to speak at Trump International the day before. I was told by the event coordinator, there's never been an event here where Trump didn't come in. And I went, oh, oh he's going to come in. Maybe he'll, <laughs> maybe he'll see me speak. And I'm not kidding you, Nico. He did not come to that event. There was 300 people there. Oh, he never sucks. came. And I went, what the heck, Lord? Okay, whatever, faith, he's got something else. The next morning is the breakfast at Mar-a-Lago and there's only 50 people in that room. And that's the one he stepped into. And that's the one he could look over and just look right at me at my red bow. And that darn red bow, I'm gonna wear it every time I'm in Florida now. (laughs) And so it's like, God, God just said, you asked, you know, you asked and you have been faithful for four years and I, I will, I will fulfill what you, what the desires of your heart are, which are to meet Trump in a special way. And when he called me out of the crowd wearing the red bow, everyone was yelling, that's Patriot Barbie. It's Patriot Barbie. And so I'm like, Trump knows I'm the Patriot Barbie. 
It's so cool. Just total fulfillment. What struck you the most about him? Like when you got to speak to him, because I know he's a big guy, right? I've never met him, but he, yeah. he looks like 6'4", 260. Like, uh, he's yeah. a big man. He's he's uh, he's not intimidating. Well, he is, he is in a sense that like because of who he is, mm -hmm. but he's he's very kind looking. Um, when you can see his eyes up close, his eyes are very kind because on the news and the media and all that, you, yeah, he's always squinting and talking. Um, I was... I was more um, shocked at my own reaction, like the fact that I couldn't talk. Like, I, when, mm. when have you found me unable to speak? I have things to say about everything. But I could not think of the right words to say this man. And in, in hindsight, I'm like, I should have asked to pray for him. What a moment that would have been in my life to pray for a president of the United States. And But I was so, um, so caught off guard by him calling me out of the crowd that I was speechless. And I'm was more shocked that I would react that way instead of be my normal self. Like, Hey, what's up, bro? How you doing? I love make America great again. Uh, he just, he really just struck me as, as speechless. So it's a beautiful yeah. moment when you think about it though. Mm -hmm. It is. And then I'm, I'm praying that, you know, that wasn't it for me. That wasn't it. Oh, I met Trump. Life is, I I'm done. Like I have no other aspirations. I and mean, that was not my biggest aspiration in life, but I feel like he knows who I am. He's met me. So now this has been twice that he's met me. Um, I am going to wear that stinking red bow. I have no shame if I ever go to a rally again. And I feel like when is the day that Donald Trump is going to get on the internet and go, what was that red bow girl name? Oh yeah, Patriot Barbie. And he looks up my website and he sees what I stand for. And that, that begins the real relationship with the leader of the free world. And so God doesn't do anything by mistake. That was not, that was not life-changing for me, right? I'm not a celebrity overnight because I met Trump. I'm not, you know, my movement isn't now millions of people because I met Trump. But what will happen, I believe, is that God has a plan for the way that I met him and and what will be what will be our relationship moving forward. Do you consider Trump a masculine man? I do. Yeah, absolutely. Because he's authoritative. He is uh, powerful. He is, um, he doesn't mi mince his words. He what he what he feels he says. And a lot of people criticize him for that. Someone needs to, you know, um, keep him, like keep him quiet or, or write his speeches or, you know, keep him, uh, handle him, handler, that's a good word. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, you want someone that's powerful and authoritative and can take this country back, but you want someone to be handling that man? That would make that handler more powerful than him. So let's just make that person president. We don't need someone who will answer to anyone. We need someone who is so unapologetic about their beliefs that they will speak it even when we disagree with it, right? I totally disagree with his recent stance on abortion. Totally disagree that when Arizona upheld its 19, whatever it was, 67 abortion ban, mm -hmm. I wish he would have just stayed quiet. That would have saved millions of babies' lives, millions. Um, I hate that he spoke against that, but we take the good with the bad. We, to, to pretend that he would be perfect would be to pretend that he would be Jesus or even worse, the Antichrist. So, um, I, I just love that he is who he is, whether we love it at all times or not. Can't agree with you more. You don't need to agree with somebody to respect them. Mm -hmm. Yep. You you definitely don't need. And if there's one thing that America's missing, Canada's the same, by the way, is masculine men. Yeah. We definitely need more of them because, holy shit, we're going to be needed more <laughs> than ever. Mm -hmm. Holy shit, we're going to be needed. Do you yep. think that's one of the biggest problems the U.S. is facing, the, last, the, the lack of masculinity? Like men, they're not ready to just do exactly what you said. Stand up, say mm -hmm. what they have to say. Don't apologize for what they say. Don't need to agree with them, but they will stand up for what they know is right. Right. There, there's like, there's a majority of two different kind of men in America right now. One is the man that is completely testosterone depleted. That's the only way I can really... Yeah. imagine what's happened is what's in our food and the poisons in our household and all of that because those men are i don't want to call them weak but we need them to be stronger and then there's a different kind of man and that's the actual toxic man which is like the whatever podcast guys the red pill guys the the andrew wilson's where they think that submission means control that they should be able to control women well we're living in a time where you do not want to see women controlled because these women are going to the school boards fighting for their babies. These women are on Instagram speaking their mind and fighting a good fight. 
But what these strong women need is an even stronger man backing them up. And we could use that happy medium, which is not a, not a weak man and not a man that thinks he's so strong that he, he behaves as though he is a God over his wife and over women, but somewhere in the middle of men that go, I can appreciate and love that God created my wife for such a time as this. She is a strong, bold woman. And to make sure that I am matching that and supporting her, I'm going to be even stronger and bolder. I'm going to come alongside her. Sometimes I'll even overpower her voice because that's how strong I am. And I'm going to do it while continuing to provide for our family, raise our children and love her like Christ loved the church. Like where, where is the, the, the saturation of those kind of men in America? That's what we need is those men to come back. But the feminist movement has destroyed those men. The feminist movement has said, we don't even want you to open our door. That's how strong we are. And it's like, well, a woman can, that can open her own door can do whatever, that she can do anything else then. If she doesn't need me, then I'm out. And so men have checked out. And I'm here to say we need them back. Like, screw these feminists. Ignore everything they've ever said. We want our doors held open. We want our luggage carried. We want you to stand in front of us and defend us. We want you to provide for our families, to raise our children, to um, empower us and to do it all as a, as a God-fearing man. Uh, Dan Dan, the Pac-Man, is saying, I'm a real man because I was raised by God-fearing parents mm -hmm. and I raised my children that way. Couldn't agree with him more. I love it. You know, you said something that is often misunderstood. You know, in Christianity, women are supposed to be subservient to their husband, not in a way that mm -hmm. they're slaves, but in a way that they don't, that they respect their leadership. Mm -hmm. They're not questioning every single little things that they do. Mm -hmm. Instead, they trust their men to do the right thing, to be the protector, the provider that they need. And, you know, there's a misconception when we see a, man, a, a woman should stand behind her men. Mm -hmm. You look at me, I'm 220 pounds. My girlfriend is 115 pounds. <laughs> so she, I am literally twice her size. Yeah. So if I'm meant to protect her, I need to stand in front of her. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that I'm her boss. That just means that I will put myself in harm's way mm -hmm. in order to defend my girlfriend, to defend my family. That's right. And if you push it even further... A good man needs a woman that's there for him, that will believe in him, mm -hmm. that will stand by him. Why do you think this is so insulting to feminists out there to say that women need men, they need to play a role, men need women, and they need to play their role? There are, There is such a thing as gender roles. Let's right. call a yep. spade a spade here. Yeah. Why do you think it's so insulting to feminists to admit that they're not perfect. I think it's insulting because, and Kendall, my best friend, Kendall in Kentucky, I'm sure you follow her. She's my uh, business partner with pretty little Patriots. She was on the whatever mm -hmm. podcast with me. She brought up some really amazing points on that podcast, which of course were completely overlooked and talked over, but feminists believe that by submitting to a man, you lose yourself you lose authority, you lose the ability to make decisions and you lose like power. And that is not true because if you submit to a good man, a godly man, you are given more security, more freedom and more authority because that man is handling things that you now don't have to handle, which frees you up to be a feminine woman. So if you have, have, have answered to or submitted to, and I have been there, I, I was in an abusive relationship 20 years ago with a man who claims to be godly and he certainly was not, he was abusive, but I submitted to him <clears throat> and it was, um, it was, it was slavery. It was enslaving because he wasn't godly. He, he was critical of me. He was abusive towards me. He made me feel like I was nothing. And therefore I answered to him because I felt like I was nothing and no one else would ever want me. But when you, when you answer to a godly man, he takes care of you in a way that you can s turn that part of your brain off and stop thinking about hustling for money, um, hustling for boss babe status, being somebody that, you know, God doesn't even necessarily call you to be. You're freed up because you feel so secure in yourself as a woman that you can be free to be that woman, the woman that God's called you to be. So 
these gender roles are not meant to constrict women. They're actually a blessing. And I'm just figuring this out because I was a boss babe my whole life. I was like the main breadwinner in Oregon with my salon. And now I'm not because I don't even have a job. <laughs> so I literally am like, honey, step into that role. You are now the provider, the protector. Like I contribute nothing. I need you to fall into this role. And God called him into it. And it's, it's like so eye-opening to me to be like, I want to do the dishes and I want to do the laundry and I want to get my house tidy and clean. And I get to because he's taking care of the rest. And I get to fall into a role where I feel secure and safe. And I'm getting more joy out of those weird gender roles that I used to scoff at. So that's, that's the problem is these feminists think it's meant to control, but what God designs for us is never meant to harm us or control us. It's meant for good if you would just give it a shot, but you do have to give it a shot with the right person. So if you if you're in a relationship with a not godly man and he's asserting his dominance over you in a controlling way, not in a love the wife as Christ loved the church way, submission way, then that's not going to feel very good. And I think that's what a lot of feminists have endured and that's why they hate it so much. And the most beautiful thing about what you said is I'm ready to bet that you allowing, and I'm not saying allowing as in you were directing what your husband was capable of doing, but by you not fighting it anymore and just saying, you know what, be the man. Mm -hmm. You allow him to be, by not fighting, by letting it happen and falling mm -hmm. back, if you will, you allow him to be the man he's supposed to be. Have you seen a change in him? Yes. Ever was, since you did yeah. that? Yeah, I was going to say that that's another part of the role, gender role is if a man feels stepped over and authoritated over by his wife, that is going to make him fall into a more submissive role because he doesn't, you know, happy wife, happy life. He doesn't want to create friction against his wife by, by saying, because my husband is not controlling. He's the kindest man. He would never step in and go, you are done with this Patriot Barbie crap. Like it is you're way too dominant. You're way too loud. You're, you're blah, blah, blah. I'm the man of the house. You need to quiet down. He would never do that to me. But as God helps us fall into these different roles, this is just another gift he's given me, right? He's just blessing my whole life. My husband has gained more self-confidence, more, more of an authoritative attitude because he doesn't feel like he's competing against me to be the authoritative person in the household. And so The more I am falling into my feminine role, the more he's naturally picking up his masculine role and things are starting to balance out. And this is all God, by the way. This is all something that I've been praying, praying for. And I bet you secretly my husband's been praying for it too. I wish my wife would fall into more of a role in our home and this and this. And I want to be the man that provides for her. And you can imagine his self-esteem now knowing that like, I went from being the sole breadwinner to him knowing like, Man, my wife is counting on me. She believes in me. How how good must that feel for him? Ask him. Ask <laughs> him and tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me call him real quick, honey. Yeah, ex exactly. But you're live. Uh, I've heard this one so many times. I'm a big proponent of masculine men, and this is something I hear all the time. And I'm I'm happy that you're ready to admit this. I'm happy that more and more women that I speak to privately after podcasts and stuff will admit to that too, to say, you know what? I remember speaking to a woman that, that was getting divorced. She just got divorced and she had me on her podcast. She's more of a feminist, but by the end, she stayed on the, she stayed on the recording with me. It wasn't like live or anything, but we started talking and she's like, you know what? I messed up. Uh, my, my ex that wanted to be masculine, uh -huh. I fought him every single decision he was trying to make. Every oh. time he was trying to lead, I was being a boss bitch and I was just fighting him on everything. And now that she's she's been single for a while because she like the divorce process will take a year, mm -hmm. she's starting to realize that, you know what, I fucked up. I, did she, did I had a back? good... I got, I, I don't know. This is, I have mm -hmm. no idea. I should, I should contact her again yeah. just to see where that went because it was just in conversation. I, she invited me to speak about masculinity and I started challenging her right on the podcast. And by the end, she's like, damn, maybe I did fucked up because he was oh. a great man and oh. I pushed him the whole way through. Wow. That is too bad. Poor thing. And that's, I think that's what's happening to a lot of women in America is they're making their choice to be 
you know, the, the boss babe over many, many things. Having children is one of them. I don't want to, I don't want a man to, to uh, put a ring on it and settle me down. And then I can't do whatever I want. I got to answer to him. And that's just not, that's not the right attitude. The right attitude is man, how amazing that a man wants to take you, make you his own and care for you and keep you. What a gift. And again, this is what men do. This is what mm -hmm. masculine men do. We take care of and we protect. We're ready mm -hmm. to put our lives on the line. Doesn't matter that it's doing really dangerous jobs just so that we can provide. Mm -hmm. But somehow this has become toxic. But yeah. it's funny how the complete opposite is true. Weak men are toxic. Weak men yep. are the one. If you think a masculine man is dangerous, wait till you see what a weak man is capable right. of doing. That's right. And and weak men weak men are the ones that that are usually that usually end up abusive verbally, mm -hmm. physically, all that because they're they're so insecure with themselves. The only way that they feel they can assert any authority over a woman is to physically or or mentally or emotionally verbally abuse them. Therefore, the woman becomes inferior by nature because that's how abusive relationships work. So really, it's the weak beta men that are abusive, not the big manly toxic men. Those men wouldn't lay a hand on a woman because that's their woman to protect. Even more than that, what's interesting is that when you think about it, the men that all the men that hate on you, how much do you want to guarantee that they're very toxic in their life because their their behavior is showing it? Yep. They're not masculine men. Right. It's yep. not guys like me that goes on i never go on anybody else's profile to insult them you know what i there's a feature in instagram that allows you to just continue scrolling it's magical when you see something you don't like you just continue scrolling that's what i've learned to do i, I know it's i don't think everybody has that option but it's interesting how the weak men that are calling us toxic for mm -hmm. our beliefs are the ones that are toxic but ironically they can't seem to figure that out for themselves right yep what I know you're Christian. I know you're Christian. I know that you believe in Jesus. And, you know, one of the things that I that bothers me in the US and Canada even more is there is a big disconnect or starting to see a massive disconnect from our values as a society and the values that it was founded on, which are Christian values, mm -hmm. like to a point where, man, I think it's last week. United Methodist Church, which is one of the biggest organization in the U.S., is now accepting same-sex marriage mm -hmm. and LGBTQ clergy. As a Christian, it pisses me off to no end. But what do you think about this, about the, seems like the need that we have as Christian to cater to people that really don't care about our values? Yeah, it's... Uh... Oh gosh, it's such a, it feels like a slow decline, but mm. then all of a sudden in the last four years, it feels like it's ramped up. The, the trigger words being inclusivity, right? Mm. Well, it's like they're trying to make the gospel inclusive, but to the point where it's not the gospel anymore. Mm. Because if, if, if the Bible isn't the basis of our belief system and the New Testament and what Jesus died for isn't the moral compass anymore, then, then what is Christianity really? It's, 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 it's nothing because if you're not reading the Bible and basing your decisions on the Bible and what God said, then you don't have a religion and they're trying to make it so inclusive. What's really sad is that when you do that, you stop preaching the gospel because the gospel is you have to give your life to the Lord. You have to turn away from sin and repent, and then you will be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven. When you include people living in sin, in, in let's, let, I mean, you know that this is just going to snowball, right? Into everything. Then you're not telling them that they have any changes to make. Then you're basically denying them the kingdom of God because they're not ever going to change. They're never got, ever going to have a relationship with Jesus where they ask, you know, Lord, what are, what are my, what are my sins? Where do you see, see me wanting? And you're actually a church that's now doing the opposite of what the Bible asks you to do, which is further the kingdom of heaven because you're actually preventing people from entering the kingdom of heaven with inclusivity. So it's, um, it's so sad to see it. It's sad to see the actual churches doing it. Like it's one thing for a church or someone in a church to, to take these actions because people are flawed and people are sinners and they'll do it. But to have full churches come, come out alongside this and say, 
our announcement is that we will allow this. And it's like, whoa, you just altered the entire belief system with your church. You're going against what you're supposed to be preaching. You literally yeah. are going against what the book says. Yeah. It, it would be like all of a sudden saying, we're going to allow abor an, an, an abortionist to be our, our leader. Not yeah. someone that has murdered or did murder or was a past abortionist. Someone that is currently living as a murderer in sin, he's going to be our pastor. Like, so what line now, what sin are we going to draw the line at? Because now there is, there seems to be no line. So it, let's, let's let us, a, a, a prostitute, uh, lead our worship. She's not an ex prostitute. It's totally different. She's a current prostitute. And we, we don't even ask her to repent of that and walk away from that. We just accept her as she is. Do you see how crazy that sounds? Uh, yeah, I think about this all the time. I was, I, I'm reading a book right now called Leaving Christianity, which is, which is written by two pastors in Canada about mm -hmm. what happened in the 1960s when the church separated, when the state separated from the church. Like, why did we go from a massive Christianity society to basically turning our, our back on God? Mm -hmm. And this is a, as you said, it's snowballing. And to me, I, I was brought up outside the church. Like I was never part of the church. It's something that I discovered about a year ago. And I've been spiritual for at least 10 years, but I don't come from a country where it's everywhere. Like we spent 18 months in the South. We literally just came back. We were in no. Arizona, Texas. We spent time in Alabama, Tennessee. We, we did 23 different States and over mm -hmm. there, it's just, part of the fabric of society now we're back and i'm looking at canada and i'm like what the fuck is going on here there's none nobody looks at religion or as christianity as what our, our, our countries were based on mm -hmm. those were the values on if you look at you at you guys if you look at your constitution the rights that you have in your constitution are based on christianity yep and now you guys are walking completely away from it mm -hmm. and you're wondering why your country is going to shit. I'm not. <laughs> like I know like exactly it's like why. a fucking surprise, right? <laughs> I know exactly why. Cause we kicked God out of it. This is, this is the funny thing is that I've read leftist comments where they say, basically they say, don't push your Christianity on us. This is a free country. And I'm like, this country was founded on Christianity. So to be honest, mm -hmm. if you don't believe in it, you should be the one to see the door because mm -hmm. this is what we have stood for, for how, how long? And now you suddenly want it to not be that way. You are free to leave. You are not free to stay here and tell everyone else depart from the way in which this country was founded. I think that that's, that's asinine. You know, I'll push it even further because this is a question. I was sitting outside with a drink and a cigar yesterday and I was thinking about this. In the 60s, in Canada, we could say that even if you weren't religious, you knew that your country was a Christian country. You knew this is something everybody knew. And we're talking 60 years ago. We're not talking 500 years ago. We're right. really talking when my mother was young. Mm -hmm. In the U.S., when I was there, I saw the divide. I saw the North standing more like Canada and the South more like what I imagined the U.S. was before a christian country mm -hmm. what would you say the u.s stands for today if you ask if you walked around with a microphone and you start asking people in the street describe the u.s describe your country what do you think would come out of their mouth i think they i think people would say Ugh, it just kills me to say it they would say like diversity and inc inclusivity they would say that because our country is so welcoming and freeing and it's the greatest country in the world because anyone can come here and do anything they want. Ironically, these are the same people that call our country racist, right? The whole country is racist, but yet they can't also not admit that anyone can come here and do anything and be anything, but now they're doing it illegally too. So it's like, I don't know, those are the leftists. Um, the, the conservatives would say that we're the, free, we're the greatest country in the world, we're the freest, which is true. Um, but one sees it as negative and one sees it as positive, which I think is really strange. 
You know, one thing I've realized is there's three types of people you're going to deal with in life. Social media doesn't matter. You'll have people that will agree with you, love you, no matter what you have to say, they'll agree with you. Mm -hmm. You have the complete opposite, which whatever the fuck you say, they're going to hate you for it. But then you have the people in the middle, which as per the bell curve is six is 65 ish percent. And when you look politically speaking, this is the biggest part of the US is people in the middle. And most of them, I don't know if you you've noticed this, but a lot of them are, they call themselves spiritual, they believe in God, mm -hmm. but they don't know what they believe. They believe in nature, they believe in Buddhism, they believe in something more themselves, somehow they connect to God, but they can't put it into words. Right. Do you think that they're the key? to bringing back your country because your country's fucked like my country is is destroyed already i don't think i don't know that there's a way to come back from it but i, I i'm an optimist if i look at yours it's very hard for me to believe after spending so much time there that there's not something that can be done do you I, think that the, the spiritual people in the middle that are looking they believe in god because i think that's the biggest difference if you don't believe in god I think this is where abortion becomes normal. Right. This is why inclusivity becomes normal because there's no self-responsibility. There's no accountability mm -hmm. anymore. Yep. But the people, and I don't think that I can change them. I don't think that you and I can talk to very real leftists and change their mind, right. nor do I think that I have the patience to do it yet. <laughs> But the people in the middle that are spiritual, that believe in God, mm -hmm. do you think they're the key? Yeah, I think they are because I, I would say that I was pretty close to being one of them prior to 2020. And here's what I think is going to happen. I think that realistically, I would never encourage anyone to take this route, but realistically, we could all just sit back and do absolutely nothing. And the left would push so far that those people in the middle will come over to our side. Because what we're seeing is the last four to 10 years of the, we give them an inch and they take a mile, right? Well, someone says, oh, that's it. That was my line. I cannot believe that they're putting porn in children's school books. I was okay with, you know, the pride flags. I was okay with this. I was okay with this. But that is too far. I'm done. I'm pushing back. Okay. Well, some people are still not even awake to that. Let's give it another year. Now they're bringing in, um, they're bringing in prostitutes to talk to your children about prostitution as a career choice, right? Whoa, 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 okay, that's my line. Now I'm done, I'm pushing back. We could sit back and do nothing and they would keep pushing so far that eventually they would wake everybody up in the middle and our side would be a military. And that is what's happening. For me, it was, whoa, 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 whoa. You think you can control a virus and now you're gonna shut all my businesses down and I can't make any money? No, 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 no. That's where I draw the line and I woke up. I became a warrior. And shortly after that, it was the vaccine. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're going to tell me I don't have a choice with my own body. You're going to put a poison in me or I lose my job. The line is drawn. I'm done. Do you see how just they keep pushing and pushing and eventually they will push every single middle ground person over to our side and we will have done not a thing. They did it themselves. And I really believe that they're going to keep doing that And our side has continued to grow and grow and grow until we are so big, we literally trample them out. Uh, you're probably bang on because if you look at the studies that are coming out right now, and I think Turning USA talks about it all the time, the 18 to 25 year old are the most conservative men they've seen in mm. generations. And it's just happening because they know something's wrong. They can yep. feel it, right? So yep. boys are starting to wake the fuck up, which is yep. just as you said, it's not because the right are doing something, it's because the left is pushing so far that they're just like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, put the brakes on, you guys are yeah. fucking crazy. Dude, imagine being an 18 to 25 year old guy right now and going, okay, I can't even ask a girl If I can find a girl that still wears makeup and dresses like a female, that's actually a female, by the way. <laughs> I was going to say that female. exactly. <laughs> If I can find one girl that isn't like grossly obese, has her hair dyed blue, you know, goes by they, them, a girl that's pretty attractive. Um, I want to take her out. She seems to have a good personality, but I can't even ask her out because she, maybe she's a feminist and she doesn't want me to. She's going to ask me out. Okay, like what, what, are their, what are their options? 
They're either having to date men who are identifying as women, women who are feminists, or very, very rarely actual conservative women who, ironically, I'm, I'm guessing they're just Christian women now because a woman who doesn't believe in God probably has no reason to fall into like the conservative um, realm because they're being taught the complete opposite in schools. So their little like dating pool is depleted. And so they imagine that they're probably like, this has got to stop because I'm never going to find a wife or mm -hmm. even just a woman to date based on the belief system of where America's at right now. Hey, Amen. It's unfortunate, but I told, I couldn't agree with you more. And it needs to, but it needs, and it needs to happen. So you'll see they're, they're pushing it so far mm -hmm. that they are doing damage to their own party and it's going to, it's just going to backfire. It needs to happen. They needed to push this far for other people to wake up. They're doing a very good job at it. Yes. <laughs> they're doing yes, a they very are. good job at it. So <laughs> thanks for your time. We've been going for 50 minutes. Absolutely loved it. Thanks for your time. But where can people find you? Uh, my website is patriotbarbie.com. All my merch, my businesses, my book, um, all of the ways to contact me are on there. And my Instagram is the.patriot.barbie. Awesome. I'll put it into the, the yeah. video description. And you. let me, if you don't mind, of course you don't mind. I'm going to finish with a prayer and we'll call mm. it a day. Okay. So God, thank you for everything that you do for us. Thank you for our blessings. Please help us find the courage to stand up for what we know is right. The words to speak what needs to be said and the will to continue to help and serve others. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Nico. So yeah. amazing to chat with you.